All right, hello everyone. So I work primarily on non-convex semi-infinite programming and as part of that doing some uh, non-convex global optimization as that's required for most of these algorithms. And I was trying to implement one of these routines to essentially handle semi-infinite equality constraints in these non-convex programs. And I ran into this issue, which was I needed to develop a special type of relaxation in a global solver to make this work. Well, there are a lot of great platforms for taking existing solvers and putting them into meta-algorithms and doing structured programming, but most of the existing packages sort of stop at the actual global solver level as far as what you can play with. So you look around at the existing open source solvers, they all take a fairly standard form. And that's not what I can actually use for this algorithm. So you run into a bit of a problem. And we decided to address this by introducing our own modular global optimization package in Julia. Since Julia is pretty optimal for developing low level routines that allows users that want to do this um, some flexibility without a lot of time constraints. And we figured we could integrate this into Jump um, and really be the first uh, McCormick relaxation based solver to be publicly available and hopefully uh, tag along to other people's work using uh, standard benchmark libraries, which are previously difficult to do with these techniques. Ah, other way. So for most of this talk, I'll be discussing the relaxation techniques we're actually using with this. They're fairly different from the standard. And I'll then talk about how these tie into our uh, modular global solver package. And I'll discuss some of the library of tools we've developed where we can sort of pull into our generic branch and bound scheme if you want to use them. And I'll conclude with what I'm really excited about right now, which is how we actually can um, introduce rule sets to reformulate global problems in sort of interesting odd ways where the user has some control over these. So as a chemical engineer, most of the models I work on look something like this as we simulate them. We have a block diagram, a lot of uh, linking connections here, and inside these blocks you have highly non-convex and often non-smooth physics taking place. But for the most part, you can only really play with a few of the variables in your system. You can open a valve, you can add more power to a heater, but once you do that, you set temperatures, you set pressures, and those help you determine what the overall cost of the system will be. And this creates this natural dichotomy between control variables and state variables. So if I were to um, attempt to solve a convex problem that's differentiable, that's a simulation, there's a pretty standard approach to this which is you take that simulation, you wrap it with an automatic differentiation scheme, you pass it to a local solver, and if everything goes well, you're done. Well, with non-convex programs, you have to generate relaxations, which is fairly difficult. And I'm gonna present the way of doing this, um, which is based on initially McCormick's paper from 1976, where he introduces this decomposition method for bounding bilinear fu functions. Essentially, you can take a bilinear term and relax it as four inequality constraints that are linear. The other way of thinking about this is you can take a bilinear term and have a lower and upper bounding function, which is non-smooth, composed of two piecewise linear functions. And actually, to generate this, you don't need to know what the values of this bilinear term are you just need to know what the relaxations of X and Y themselves are. So if you couple this with the following composition rule, where if you know the relaxations of interior functions and generally what the form of these exterior functions are, you can, via method overloading, build convex and concave bounds of functions. And we have been a library to do this in Julia where we currently support uh, pretty much all trigonometric hyperbolic functions, as well as a fair amount of non-smooth operators. And this can easily be extended if you know the convexity properties of most standard functions. 
So error functions, things defined by intervals that might be convex or concave, um, which aren't necessarily available in standard libraries. So we do this by defining a structure where we hold the relaxations. We also hold vectors, which may be either subgradients or gradients, depending on how we set our settings in our library. And this in turn with, when we uh, overload these with standard arithmetic operators. So we can generate these relaxations of each of our operator based on convexity rules. And in most cases, these are fairly simple. So if you look at the hyperbolic tangent, well, it's convex over one region, it's concave over the other. So we're going to do a convex relaxation using the function up to a point, and then you just take a line segment after that. So if we want to use this relaxation style in Julia, what you can do is essentially load our ego package, define your function. Since we're taking a relaxation, which is a function rather than an interval bound, we have to define the point at which we're taking the relaxation, as well as what a seed subgradient would be. So what some unit vector that has a coordinate corresponding to each uh, variable. And then the interval over which we're going to take the relaxation. If we were to pass this to our function and plot it, we'd get something that looks like this. So it, the relaxations themselves are tighter than natural interval bounds, but they're also typically non-smooth. Now our package supports the standard variation, which I've shown here, as well as a few novel theoretical results from the past couple of years. So the factorial framework, which you can build these relaxations on, can be extended to include uh, min and max operators, pretty trivially, um, as well as differentiable McCormick relaxations can be generated, where you can have a relaxation which is itself once differentiable, which could pass to a interior point method. Uh, additionally, as you're propagating these bounds, you can also look and see if the affine bound defined by your relaxation and its subgradients is tighter than the interval bound and cut the interval bound at that point. Just sort of this implicit variance of a uh, poor man's NLP. And each of these settings can be changed with a single line API in our package. So we've integrated this into a standard continuous spatial branch and bound framework where that branch and bound library is represented by this block diagram. So each of these blocks are something the user can pop off um, from their jump model and replace with their own custom function if they choose to. And this allows some flexibility as we build different solvers. And when you're actually generating these McCormick relaxations in this framework, you typically use them for the during the lower bound or doing some pre-processing. So you use the differentiable variant with NLP solvers, or you take a affine relaxation of your final relaxation. Oh, uh, yes? Sorry. Uh, that's uh, for pre-processing. Is it the upper bound and by the upper bound, or is it the you actually saw the deep bound? For pre-processing, uh, oh, there should be a less than or equal to there. It's the standard range reduction. Okay. My apologies. Okay. And we've implemented this in a uh, solver that interfaces with Jump, where we're going to sort of keep our best in class McCormick based solver available. And right now we can do a interval constraint propagation, use LP contractors as well as your standard range reduction with the solver. And we can also do duality-based bound tightening. So the nice thing about the quarter relaxations is that they're typically quadratically convergent, and they're tighter than interval bounds. Additionally, you often recover constraints in a very, fairly tight form when you pass them through this overloading process. So if you were to define linear relaxations via script, and you take the quarter relaxation, you get the exact linear function back. If you do it with fairly simple convex functions, you often get a very tight relaxation of the convex function. Um, 
And this really helps with the clustering problem that's pretty common in global optimization, where if you have weak relaxations around uh, global optima, you get more and more and more subdivisions, and you almost get this exponential scaling number of bucks you have to evaluate to prove you have a global bound. So in this simple little example comparing our interval method to McCormick method, um, we still see a 30x improvement in the McCormick approach, even though this sample example really biases toward the interval method. And in this right part of the slide, we're just illustrating that instead of using one of our library of lower bounding problems, we could simply build the jump model, custom, define our custom uh, lower bounding function as an interval, and then solve that. No. So we have most of the expected console outputs for a global solver in terms of the current lower bounds, um, various gaps, and we've implemented most really common branching procedures for uh, continuous branch and bound. So why are these really interesting for these simulation-based models? Well, let's go back to the block diagram I showed on slide two. And in this case, it's an example from a Khan's paper here, where he's looking to optimize the cost of this process approximated by a nitrogen flow rate, which is your highest cost driver in this case, where you can control essentially 10 different temperatures and pressures, and you can also essentially connect these streams that are cooling down in blue to streams that are heating up in red. And as a result, you can, you're trying to minimize the um, energy usage of your process and get the most return there. And this can be modeled as a pinch point energy balance where you have the physical equalities of the actual blocks in addition to this set of uh, max and min constraints. So if you were to formulate this in Baron, which was done, it would require 173 continuous variables, 360 binary variables, 1,200 constraints, and it would still be a mixed integer nonlinear program. And if you look at this from a non-smooth approach where you're overlaying the simulation, you get 10 variables. And as a result, if you use this McCormick approach for this simulation, and you use a fairly primitive branch and bound approach, there are some cases where you can get comparable performance to barren in the literature. So, it's like a pre, uh, so the, the formulation is a simulation in addition to the maxes? Or what's the... Oh, can you repeat that? Sorry. So, so you have the maxes in formulas? So does that actually cause the non-differentiability issue? Yeah, so that's why... simulation come into play? Yeah, you can essentially uh, take your input variables and just pass them to these, these constraints. And because we can overload max and min natively, you can just generate these constraints as the, basically as written. So the equality constraints that define your physics in the model we don't show the up. DLP trick for the maxes and yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, but you may also mention simulation. Is there a simulation here or? Yeah, so essentially you're treating it like as an automatic differentiation scheme where you have your control variables, which are your 10 uh, like temperatures and pressures you're setting, right. and you pass those through to your physics. Um, which the, it's not on here, it's a fairly big simulation, so I admit it. Um, uh, but it's like a function is not the, is not F or the Fs? Uh, these are in addition to the actual physical constraints in the blocks. Ah, so there's somewhere else, there's a function that, that uh, runs simulation and returns the value and you check if that is less or equal than something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It defines the equality constraints, which you then use those relaxation from the equality strains to overload these and your cost function. And Baron would be able to access that too? Uh, it can't do that. It has to formulate it as this mixed integer problem. And where, then you approximate the simulation? Uh, yeah, so you're doing this like equation-oriented simulation build with Baron versus this so sort of script build. So smaller and also maybe more precise as well? Um, Pos I, I'm not sure I'd say that necessarily, but certainly smaller, and certainly smaller in the actual variables you're going to branch on. Mm -hmm. And that's really advantageous when you have these sort of implicit functions defined by these simulations. And there are additional examples where you see 
some problems actually being addressed by these McCormick approaches that are comparable in performance to Barron. If you look at the broad library of mixed integer nonlinear programs, this is not true. Barron will beat you almost all the time, but there are some interesting corner points. Additionally, with the overloading approach and the composite approach, you can relax weird things. As I said, you can do various uh, angle-defined functions. You can do ordinary differential equation constraints. And you can actually define fixed point methods to bound things that aren't factorable, but have a representation in terms of a nonlinear inequality. This is what I'm mostly working on right now. So we want to sort of come back to the uh, AD as a global optimization tool, um, origin of this, and basically write a little script where we can give a user something that's essentially equivalent to like MATLAB's fmincon if they want to uh, write a script and then optimize that, but where you get a guarantee of global optimization. That's what's shown to the left here. And moving forward, as I've said, most of these methods really have implemented fairly primitive branch and bound techniques because a lot of the advanced range reduction is quite complex, requires a lot of decomposition methods, and that's not easy to do in a lot of languages. Whereas in Julia, we can do this expression reformulation, and that's primarily the next stage of this package. So we're going to, our initial pass of this is using the Espresso package to define rule sets, where we can find algebraic transformations that we know will um, reduce the number of auxiliary variables that need to be introduced to the model, as well as rules for introducing auxiliary variables. In most current implementations, you basically parse your complex nonlinear model down to whatever your solver feels comfortable solving. But if I'm building relaxations via composition, there's not as natural an endpoint to this. And there might be some benefit from leaving uh, compositions as is. So we want the ability to sort of play with this. And in the future, we'll also be introducing a open, uh, easy to use modular branch and cut library. And the one thing I might have not mentioned is that for this particular package, we haven't quite got all the uh, non-smooth upper bound routines in there yet. We're still working on wrapping local methods using a lexiographic or Clark derivative approach. Uh, so yeah, I'd like to thank my collaborators at UConn, and if there are any questions,